Uh, the New York Times that orders readers to celebrate the election of the BDS supporter. Now, one thing I want to say is that in this article, it claims that the New York Times language inaccurately describes the goal of the BDS movement, which is not to improve the treatment of Palestinians, but rather to eradicate Israel and eliminate as the Jewish state by insisting on the right of return to Israel for 7.25 million. What do you think? Well, first of all, we're talking about a congresswoman that believes this. I think she's your congresswoman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> Shame on you for letting this happen. <laughs> I, I tried. I, I, I can't blame you. I know you did. So this, this congresswoman, um, uh, Ilan Omar from Minnesota, um, is celebrating the fact that she's a BDS supporter that, for your viewers that don't know, stands for Boycott, Divestment, and oh, Sanctions oh. Against Israel. And the founder of the BDS movement, Omar Bagudi, uh, educated uh, in the United States, uh, publicly declares that the goal of BDS is the destruction of the state of Israel and the replacement of the state of Israel with a one nation from the river to the sea that's no longer Israel, that's no longer Jewish. So people that incite for BDS ultimately are wildly anti-Israel, wildly anti-Semitic, and are pushing hard for a whole lot of dead people. Now this woman, who is one of those supporters, is your representative in the House of Representatives, and the New York Times, once the greatest paper, the Ring of Truth, and all that stuff um, in New York, has become the leader of the crazy train movement, at least editorially. When they can put out something celebrating how great it is that a member of the House of Representatives is Muslim, believes that Sharia is great, and believes that BDS is terrific, and somehow extolling their readers to support this and celebrate this is the height of insanity. It's as if they don't know what BDS means and stands for, but yet they do. And they don't know what Ilan Omar has said in her press conferences and in her tweets when it's all public record. This, anybody that supports Sharia, that knows what it really means, is against everything women have accomplished in the last 200 years in the United States, is against equality, is against religious openness, is against gays, is against uh, uh, females having any equality. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, and she's your congresswoman, Jermaine. I know you're upset, and the rest of Minnesota ought to be upset, and the United States ought to be upset, and people just ought to stop reading the New York Times for coming out with crazy, insane, unsupportable editorials like this one. People got to start waking up, you know. Um, a lot of things, you don't have to look very far for the, for the truth. It's mainly uh, hiding in plain sight is what they say, right? And... The things that are happening in this country, let me tell you, are right in plain view. It, I mean, you, you, you have to be living in an alternate reality to not see what is actually going on. And when we have people like Ilhan Omar, Rashida Talib, um, you, what that other guy that I is from here, um, uh, Keith yeah. Ellison, and such, right? These people who come in, um, their rhetoric tells everything you need to know about them uh their background their ties of their association right the only thing that is stopping you from believing about who they are is your own uh basically your own self i mean they they basically present everything to you right if a criminal came up to your barry you know and said yeah i got you know you can see in my background i used to be in a gang right um 
I have weapon. You see around me, I always have weapons. I always speaking about robbing people, um, killing, and so forth, right? But yet, you are saying to yourself, you know what? I shouldn't be thinking like this. This is bad of me, right? Be, be, because some liberal tells you not to judge. And this is where I'm getting to in uh, because of this notion in this country, uh, Barry, that we cannot judge is the main reason why these people are able to skate free and do this type of crap here. You can't judge, Barry. Who are you to judge, Barry? That's the way they act. And that is my last question to you. What do you think about this notion in America that when we have the truth all around us, we got people who are hiding in plain sight. They're giving us everything that we can say that, hey, this is nefarious, but yet the liberals, the main PC culture says we cannot judge. How does that hinder us from protecting our nation? Jermaine, it's the reason we started americantruthproject.org. Exactly that reason is to bring the truth to people in the hopes that when people get educated from sources that aren't on CBS or CNBC or MSNBC that are incredibly biased, and some of these networks are literally open about their bias, like CNN is an example, um, there has to be a place to go find the truth out. And yeah, you sure as heck better judge, because if you're so dumb to say, well, everyone has good in them, and I'm going <laughs> to yep. cheat, you'll get shot in both cheeks, and they'll take your stuff and live in your house, and you'll be dead. So at some point, people in this country need to wake up and say, you know what, enough's enough. I don't want to step over people injecting themselves with heroin on the streets of San Francisco. I don't want to walk through public transportation uh, stepping in and through feces because somehow that's okay. I don't want rape gangs running up and down the street because the borders were open. I don't want crime soaring through the roof. I want a peaceful life. I want to be able to work hard, pay my taxes, be with my family, and enjoy America. That's what American Truth Project is for, to be able to tell people what they need to know about. Look, one of your new congresswomen got sworn in on Thomas Jefferson's Quran, and it's being, it's being celebrated in the press. Yep, and do you yep. want to know what people don't know? Well, I'm going to tell you. Thomas Jefferson's Quran was kept in the White House by our greatest president ever maybe the greatest genius to ever be in a political office anywhere. The guy that wrote the Declaration of Independence kept a Quran there. And why did he keep a Quran? Not because he admired Islam, but because he was scared to death of Islam. And if you read his writings, he writes about how Islam is not and will never be compatible with the Constitution and the Declaration that he wrote because they did not believe in a society where people were equal, where everyone got to vote, where property rights were inherently protected, and all the Bill of Rights they put together violate the Quran. And that's why he kept the Quran on his desk, and yet it was used to swear in somebody today, just as Keith Ellison was sworn in on that same Quran. Those people are celebrating the fact that they don't pledge allegiance in the same way that all the thousands of other people who have been sworn in on those steps have done, but they have a different allegiance. And your people that watch your show need to wake up and get the truth. And then they will be enabled and hopefully motivated to do something about it. Because if you don't go to the polls and vote, and you get one of these people elected who don't have your best interests at heart, and you didn't participate, you have no right to complain. Why? Because you didn't do anything about it. Hopefully, every time you and I do a show like this, a couple more people get motivated, Jermaine, to do something about it. That's why I'll tell them, as much as I can, go to findberry.com, learn what you need to know 
to do something about it that you're not going to get in the regular media. Maybe it takes someone like Jermaine or someone like Barry or someone else out there to tell you where to go look it up, why a wall really works. Because you need to know, so maybe you can change one more mind and one more vote, and next time get somebody to go to Washington or to your state capitol so you don't end up, like in your case, with an attorney general who doesn't believe in women's rights but was elected <laughs> by an avalanche. Absolutely crazy, Barry. Ladies and gentlemen, the smartest man I know on this side of heaven, Barry Newsmont. Here Thank you, all. sir. Thank you for coming on here. Uh, why don't you tell her, Carl, one last time again where they can find you and where they can uh, donate and get your good material. Anybody that wants to get our stuff, please go to americantruthproject.org, which is findberry.com. Sign up. Give us your email. We'll send you stuff for free. We're not going to charge you for anything, and you might, just might, get motivated to do something about it by telling your friends and neighbors and family and eventually there'll be enough of us that we can do something about it. Thanks Jermaine, I love being with you. You keep doing what you're doing and I'll keep coming on your show. Absolutely, thank you, thank you, thank you Barry. And thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining us here.